Yo guys, what's up and welcome back to a brand new video. Today, I'm going to be discussing the do's and don'ts of FIFA 21 and how to start the game. For cheap, fast and reliable FIFA 21 Ultimate Team coins, check out u 7 Buy link in the description and use the code HABER to get yourself 5% off all of your orders. We're just four days away from the web app and five days away from the early access releasing, which is really exciting. I'm super excited for the full game to come out now. I am ready, I'm in content mode, and I'm excited just to jump straight into it. But if you're either new to FIFA or maybe you just need a helping hand with the start of the game, I'm here to help you guys out and let you guys know the best way to start the game to give you guys the best advantage, the best start, the best grind possible, and to allow you to not make mistakes that I have made in the past at the start of FIFA's and many of the players have made as well. The start of FIFA is undoubtedly the funnest time of the year in my opinion, and I'd say most of you guys will agree with that. It's really fun to start the game, to get a fresh start, to get a whole new game, start building your new team, use some cool players, open your packs and whatnot. And of course, if you've been playing the FIFA franchise for a while, you'll know right at the start of the game, we get the welcome back packs. Now, at the start of the game, when you log into the web app and combine that for the first time, or even the console, you get prompted with a welcome back message and you typically get some welcome back packs. Now, these usually include a couple of all player packs, uh, one or two 7.5Ks if you've been on the game for a long time, and typically maybe a 25K pack, 15K pack, it depends on the player and how long they've been playing. A lot of the time, people will get their pre-order bonuses in that as well. These are the packs that I got for my welcome back packs. I got two gold packs. I think I got either two or four all players packs as well. Um, they were four all players packs. So it depends on how long you've been playing um, and how long you've been on the game for. Uh, you'll get loan packs in there as well. Uh, EA typically drop you a certain amount depending on how many years you've been logging into the game. It doesn't seem fair for new players, but... That is just how it rolls sometimes. Um, as well, you might notice that you'll get, like I said, your pre-order packs. You might get your 15K packs or 25K packs for pre-order in the game, no matter which standard you've got, um, depending on when the uh, packs drop, I guess. I'm not going to lie. Every year, you don't really get much. If I was to tell you exactly how much I've made from the last few years from these packs, I never seem to get lucky in these. I would guess I've probably made... I make probably 10k a year from these packs. It's it's not much at all. And, uh, you know, you shouldn't really expect to make a whole lot. What I typically do is I store the non-rare players and sell anyone from a major league. For example, you saw I got Gwenduzi. He'll sell for four to 500 coins at the start. Um, anyone from a major league that looks like they can go into a starter squad, I would typically sell and I keep the rest of the non-rares because you can do the let's get started SBCs. You can do the, the really easy SBCs for quite literally nothing basically at the start of the game um, with those players that you get from your welcome back pack. So that's typically what I would do. I would hold on to them uh, and I would go and put them into like the let's get started SBC, get yourself a two player pack and some untradeable packs and stuff. Um, I think that to be honest, like, Although a lot of people will tell you not to use your um, starter pack players in SBCs and stuff, I don't think using a non-rare from the Uruguayan League that isn't going to sell for diddly in an SBC is necessarily a bad idea. If you're going to do the SBC anyway, you may as well get a head start, start doing it early, start doing it for potentially cheaper than when it comes out, um, and use your non-rares in the process. That being said be careful because there are some certain nation league combinations that seem to sell for quite a lot when the game comes out for the advanced SBCs. So I typically hold on to Brazilians and Argentinians. They're the two that I typically hold on to. You can hold on to French if you'd like, mainly if you want, just hold on to top nine nations if you really want to. Uh, but I find that Brazilian and Argentinian are two uh, nations that typically get used the most for the nation advanced SBCs. Um, at least in the last couple of years, they're the ones that I've noticed have been used the utmost uh, by anyone. Now let's say on the I don't know, the off chance you seem to get a good pack pool. Unless you think that it's a card that's going to be meta, for example, the Ben Yedders, the Rashfords, the Martials, the um, I, I, Kantes, the, the meta cards that people are going to desire for the first weekend league, hold on to the meta cards. Hold on to the ones you think will rise in price because year after year, we see the same correlation where the players that are going to be used for the first weekend league typically rise and rise and rise in price until the first weekend league. Um, whereas higher rated, less desirable, but still decent players typically don't rise as much. So if you were to pack, for example, an 85 rated Genie Wijnaldum, I would probably hold on to him for the next week. I think he'll rise in price a good amount. But if you were to pack, for example, an 83 rated card that you didn't think would sell for a whole lot uh, when the game comes out, that would typically drop in value. You may as well sell him early and get those coins to start building a nice foundation of coins for when the full game drops. Now, to give you an example of this, you'll see typically uh, Lucas Digne, an 83 rated left back. Uh, that's 
uh, not necessarily undesirable, but not meta and not someone that people are going to grind for for the weekend league last year you'll notice that he started off around 8k and he typically dipped to around 4,000 coins until SBCs made him expensive whereas if we look at Marcus Rashford he actually started out at about 30 to 40,000 coins and rose to 70 to 80,000 coins as we got towards the first competitive weekend league that's the kind of tell just make sure you're looking out for players that you think are going to be meta high pace high dribbling high shooting on strikers uh high pace on defenders uh high pace on on wing backs and high pace high dribbling typically around the midfield as well um you'll find that you know certain players just seem to be overhyped or just incredibly hyped anyway um but yeah i would notice uh, sorry i would look out for the uh, the noticeable signs of a player and just try and sell the ones that aren't going to rise like the lucas diniers early on and try and hold on to the ones that are going to rise like the marcus rashford early on as well you will typically make more coins in the long run liquid coins is usually the goal with these i wouldn't really try and hold on to anything unless you get a really lucky snipe on a good player i would try and just sell 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 um but if you really do pack someone that you you do think is going to rise massively hold on to it 100 this tip revolves more around early access rather than just the web app Please do not be that guy that leaves your web app. Sorry, not your web app. Please do not be that guy that leaves your, your EA Play access open and just leaves it. Please. The way that EA Play access works or early access works is it works on a 10-hour trial basis. And that 10-hour trial starts the moment you load up the game and ends the moment you quit the application. So make sure you quit the application every single time when you're jumping off. And now to go even further, make sure you actually physically back out of Ultimate Team and then quit the application. At least then you can go straight onto the web app and start continuing to do menu content on the web app whilst not necessarily uh, wasting your hours. And you don't have to wait five or 10 minutes for the game to recognize that you're off the game to go onto the web app because usually if you just quit from the menus uh, and you quit the application straight away you actually can't get on the web app straight away you have to wait five or ten minutes but if you back out of ultimate team using b or circle and you go all the way back to the main menus before quitting the application you're good to go and that being said i get tweets every single year of people saying that you've left your console on you've fallen asleep you've done this like that please 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 I feel so bad for everyone that accidentally does that every year. Don't be that guy. Make sure you turn your application off. Make sure that you, you've you been smart about it. Make sure you are not that guy that loses out on his 10 hours because you left the application on. It's so easy to quit the game. On the topic of quitting games, it's probably something you really shouldn't do. Now, at the start of FIFA, you'll notice that you'll play against people that are either a lot better than you or a lot worse than you. It'll be very rare for you to find someone that's the same skill gap as you, even at the start of the game when no one understands the game. Because the the spectrum is so broad, EA don't carry over skill rating and skill points. So when you're going into your placement games in Div Rivals, you're playing against literally anyone until you get a few wins under your belt. And then they'll start adjusting your, ra your ranking and your placement games to match uh, evenly matched opponents. So if you're getting smashed 8-0, or if you're, you're losing a game and you don't want to play, you think you're going to lose... I know it's not necessarily the, the nicest thing to do, and obviously the other opponent would prefer if you just quit the game and, and, and logged out and whatnot for it's quicker for him. But don't quit and stay in the game. You want to make as many coins as possible, and quitting that game loses out on 500 coins. Now, if you've got a, a coin bonus, that's an extra 1,000 coins, maybe 1,500 coins. I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but it mounts up, and it does stack up, and it's not worth losing out on your coin bonus for one game that you can literally see out in the next 10 minutes it's not going to make a difference to you whether you see it out or not uh you just get to go into another game quicker and you may even lose that game so in my opinion there's no point quitting games and losing out on your coin bonus and losing out on the extra coins you possibly could get because obviously the most important thing is making coins at the start of the game and playing games is one of those ways to make coins and now the last thing i'm going to leave you guys with with this guide on how to start ultimate team is to leave all your menu content to the web app for the first few days until the full game is out i'm not gonna lie i know it's fun to watch packs on the console i know it's fun to do spcs on the console and stuff like that but there's no point wasting your 10 hours on menu content unless you really don't want to play any games at all and the reason i say that is because Obviously, you only have the 10-hour trial, and that's going to last you between October the 1st to October the 6th. That's five days, 10 hours. You've got around two hours a day to play the game, realistically, um, if you're going to uh, grind the game. I would say you've got, what, four or five matches, uh, maybe a little bit more uh, a day to play. Um, there's just no time, in my opinion, to, to grind the menus when you have little to no time anyway. I would say go on the web app, open the packs on the web app, do the SBCs on the web app, do everything you need to do on the web app because realistically... 
missing out on a couple of animations is not the end of the world but when you lose your 10 hours if there's no glitch or you can't afford to buy ea play again or you can't do the glitch or whatever you're going to be regret like wasting hours and hours and hours just doing SBCs or dawdling on the menus. You, you want to make sure to keep all your menu content and all your menu stuff on the web app strictly to make sure that you maximize your 10 hours as best as you can. But that's basically it for this video. Hopefully it was helpful to you guys. I'm super excited for FIFA 21. We are so close now. I just want to get making content on the game. I want to make content for you guys. I want you guys to start uh, getting involved in the game and having fun with it. I'm going to be streaming every day. Make sure you guys check that out. Uh, link in the description to that so you guys can see uh, obviously what we're doing it'll be hours and hours of just fun content on the game and stuff like that i really hope there is an ea access glitch if there is i'll make sure to bring a video to you guys about how to do it uh so that you guys can maximize and get more 10 hours uh access and basically just play the full game until the full game comes out i guess thank you all for watching this video make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy and i'll see you later